Welcome to Dragon's Den, where the latest army of nervous entrepreneurs are hoping fortune will favour the brave. Some will leave victorious with the cash from a multi-millionaire dragon investor, whilst others will leave with nothing. First into the den is Bucharest-born Alex Buzianu, an entrepreneur primed to defend his enterprise's price tag. It's definitely going to be exciting. I hope they're not going to be too tough with me on the uh, evaluation. And there are two dragons in particular he wants to impress. I haven't decided yet which one would be the best. Obviously, Tukur Silman has the experience in, in my field, but um, Peter is definitely a very influential person. He would help uh, my, uh, my business tremendously. Influential, yes, but notoriously fiery when it comes to a company's valuation. Hello, Dragons. My name is Alex Buziano, and I'm here to offer you the opportunity to invest £90,000 in exchange for 7% of my business, the brand Temporary Forevers. We design and create leather goods for today's on-the-move professionals that wish to carry the essential gadgets and photography gear in a bag that is flexible and reflects their style and character. We bring an added versatility that is not found among other products on the market. The bag that I have with me is the first bag designed with two different faces, one that we carried as a backpack and the other as a messenger or briefcase. This makes it ideal for the commuters that want to cycle to work carrying a backpack. They can have a messenger and then they can take the straps off and walk to their meeting in a professional looking briefcase. We first made our goods available in December 2015 through a Kickstarter project and we successfully raised 136,000 pounds. Since then, We've uh, had another successful Kickstarter project, bringing in a total revenue of £330,000 in the last 15 months. Our objective this year is to make our goods available online and through retail stores across Europe, Asia and the States. Thank you for your time and uh, I'd like to show you some of the bags if possible. Luxury travel, laptop and camera bags are the proposition from Alex Buzianu. And that's easier. Yeah. He's offering just 7% equity in return for a £90,000 investment, which values his business at nearly £1.3 million. Pounds. Cheers, Peter. Peter Jones revived the fortunes of ailing photography brand Jessops. Will he think this business opportunity is picture perfect? Why f temporary forevers? That's a really odd name. Uh, the reason that is because uh, it comes from the uh, moments that you cherish and you remember that are temporary, but they last forever. So is this a temporary forever moment for you? Of course it is. Is it not for you as well? I don't, I don't know. What have been the sales in the last 12 months? 148,000 coming from the Kickstarter project, plus approximately 25,000 uh, from online sales. OK, so you basically sold £165,000 worth of product. Yes. And you're very specific about 90000 for 7%. Yes. Why? Considering that we have had approximately uh, 65000 in profit, I think it's a fair price. Would you agree? No. An early reality check from Peter Jones, who balks at the entrepreneur's £1.3 million price tag. Jenny Campbell made her millions conquering the European cash point market. Can she see profitable potential in Alex's bag brand? Why this avenue then? What, tell me what's, what's available in the marketplace now and why you've got a differentiator here. Yeah, so um, in general, leather goods tend to be more classic in design. Uh, we we uh, decided to go for a classic sort of product like the briefcase, but add a lot of functionalities that are often found among products that are not made out of leather. Yeah, I like it actually. It's a lovely, lovely product. Alex, I, I'm actually going to tell you why I'm. It's partly because I'm I'm I feel slightly conflicted. I've got a business that makes very beautiful leather bags. Uh, in thinking what I can add to a business, which is a voice and the marketing, I just think it adds confusion. Yeah. It just worries me for you. My voice wouldn't have the clarity that you probably need to get yourself heard. 
But you've got the most fascinating voice. Your accent is is isn't it interesting? Yes, yeah. I could I, I, I know. Yeah. Well, wow, Deborah Meadham flirting in the den. I've. It, Thank you, Deborah. You call that flirting? Yeah. I'd, I'd re, if you did that to me, so I'd receive need, it as flirting. You need people. You need to see a bit more flirting, Peter. Uh, but anyway, if only for that reason, I, I won't be investing, Alex. I'm out. Investment in a similar business leads a conflicted, but definitely not flirtatious, Deborah Meaden to bow out of the deal. Now, fashion guru Tuka Suleiman turns his expert eye on Alex's offering. I know a thing or two about bags. You do? Yeah. And this one here, for instance, retails for how much? It retails at two, four, five. Two, four, five. It's quite expensive. Yes. You, you're not at the low end. No. There, there are some very, very good imitation levers mm -hmm. that you put them next to each other, you, you, you won't even know it. it's an imitation lever. Can I say something? Sure. It's like having a uh, Lamborghini with a uh, Renault engine. So although on the outside it may look great, it's not the same thing. Yeah, but it's a different price point. <laughs> you yeah, know, I agree. I, I, what I'm trying to say to you is we are at that mid-price point, which is a very difficult price point. I actually, I think a price point is probably okay, depending on the quality of the product. Mm -hmm. People will be prepared to pay, um, you know, for the leather. I love leather goods, satchels, backpacks, etc. Um, I don't want to wear um, um, a, a bag that's a nylon material. I like leather. It looks it looks good, the quality, and I think it's a massively growing market for men. Uh, for men, exactly. Absolutely. So that's all good, Alex. I know this area very well. Mm -hmm. Your product's overpriced for what it is. I think the quality is mediocre at this price range. You're going to struggle and struggle big. And I'm not going to invest in you for that reason, and I'm out. Thank you. A sceptical Tuka Suleiman makes his exit. Has the retail tycoon's criticism torpedoed the entrepreneur's chances with the rest of the den. You've done well, and you've come up with a good product, high quality, but you've got the big players, the luggage manufacturers, who are all getting into the space, mm -hmm. into backpacks. So I think you can spend a lot of money and waste a lot of time going to retail I'm not going to be investing today. I'm afraid I'm out. Thanks for your time. Alex, the fact that Tuca's in this market and knows it well and has told you that basically he doesn't think it's going to amount to much is interesting because you have to take that on board. It's a tough business. And, and coming in at 90K for 7%, I think you make it harder. But. You're a very, very, very investable individual. Thank you. I th can see a big opportunity. If I was to help you put this into Jessup's overnight, um, not only would we prove Tuka wrong, we'd prove Tej wrong as well, because you said you wouldn't get into retail. In fact, you could get into retail in the next two minutes. Alex, I am going to make you an offer. But I want a decent size return. So I'm going to offer you all of the money, but I want 35% of the company. Would you agree with me that valuing the company at approximately £250,000 is too low? No, because I've, for about 200000 I introduced a brand that's doing just over a million pounds worth of sales in this type of market. We are pretty much experts in that field. Thank you. Thanks for the offer. A bullish offer from Peter Jones, one of Alex's preferred dragons. But he's demanding a hefty 28% more equity than the entrepreneur wanted to give away, slashing the value of his company by over a million pounds. Is Jenny Campbell poised to up the ante? The valuation at over a million yeah. Where's that derived from? I, um, 
I believe that everybody likes to negotiate a bit. So if I came with the most reasonable offer. Um, I think you're very, very persuasive. So I will make you an offer for all of the money for 25% of your business. Thank you. Two dragons offer up their cash, but will the entrepreneur be enticed by either offer? I'd like to ask Peter. Um, I think my business is worth about 10 times the profit if I evaluate it. Uh, so that would bring it to about 600,000, uh, which would be 15%. Is that a fair way to evaluate it? No. No, because you're a startup, and I'd, I wouldn't even value it potentially at half that. But because it's a startup, it has the growth potential. It does. But you're asking me, would I value this at 600,000? I clearly wouldn't. I did come here thinking that my max would be 15%, but uh, I would really hope and appreciate if you took into account and accepted 20%. Um, I think it's a large enough sum to get you interested. Would I get my money back? Absolutely. i tell you what I will do. I would offer you all of the money for 35%, and I would drop down to 25% when I received my money back. Would you consider accepting 20% when you get your money back? I think that's more than fair. I wouldn't. No, it's got to be 25. Alex, let me just tell you where I am, because clearly the negotiation is going yeah, on I'm sorry all for over there. Out, it's clear that you're targeting Peter for this investment. And for that reason, I'm going to withdraw my offer and say that I'm out. Sorry, sorry, freeze. Talking to Peter too much. Thank you, thank you. One deal summarily taken off the table, leaving the entrepreneur at stalemate with Peter Jones. Alex, why don't you go to the back of the room and think about it? Will he accept the Dragon's offer of all the money for a 35% stake? He's gonna, he's gonna accept it. Dropping to 25% when he gets his cash back. Um. My worry is because Jessup's is only in one country, we wouldn't have enough sales to have the impact that um, I would want. If we have a Kickstarter project that does reach above 200,000 pounds, would you be willing to go down to 20%? Don't lose it for 5%. Yes, yeah, I don't understand, Alex, why you would go for a Kickstarter project when next week you get an order for £200,000. You don't need Kickstarter if you've got a fire starter. If you do place an order of 200000 would you be able to guarantee that and I would accept 25%? Oh. You know what? I like the way you're negotiating. But I want, if we do a deal, I want us to realise that that's a partnership. I wouldn't want to go through a relationship where we end up negotiating. I understand. One last question. Would I have a salary included in this? A reasonable one? What's your reasonable salary? Would, uh, would 30 be OK? You own 75% of this company when my money's repaid. So you could be earning a lot more than that. You would, in fact, uh, guarantee that you would place that order? I'll guarantee that. We have a deal. Goodness. Thank you very much. <laughs> well Appreciate it. Thanks for your patience. No, well done. Great. Well, Thank good you. negotiation. Thank you, guys. Well done. Thanks All the best. Bye-bye. Well done. <laughs> Finally, after a hard-fought battle on both sides, Alex exits the den with a deal. 
I would have preferred if it was 20%, but it feels amazing to, uh, to have Peter Jones on board right now. I really like him. I'm jealous. Very, oh, <laughs> thank you. I'm really excited. Next into the den is Gary Taylor from Warrington. He has an existing business but has ambitious plans for expansion, for which he needs an investment of £200,000. Remember Dragon's Den rules? They say he has to get at least that or he gets nothing at all. Hello, my name's Gary Taylor and I own a company called Alpine Cleaning Services Limited. Uh, we specialise in the, the cleaning of lorries and coaches. Today we've come to ask for £200,000 for 20% um, equity in the business. Now, within the market there are 450,000 lorries registered to UK business. Now, if you estimate that each vehicle's washed every 10 days as an average, then the market's worth a staggering 400 million pounds a year. The 200,000 pound that I need is going to be used to install truck wash bays within the service stations on the motorway. Um, I've approached the three major players within that industry and we've successfully got contracts with two of the major players, namely Road Chef and Welcome Break. Those two players have given me 26 sites throughout the UK to install these truck washes. Um, we've got one open already, which has generated massive interest, and we've talked to over 350 hauliers that have already gone through this. It's been open two months. So, um, is there any questions? Gary Taylor has secured contracts to install and run truck wash bays in motorway service stations. He needs £200,000 to build enough truck washes to fulfil this potentially lucrative deal. Duncan Bannertine wants to know how much revenue Gary's business will generate. What would you charge me to wash my lorry? Say it was that size. Yeah, that's an articulated level. Yep. It's £16. £16? Pounds. £16. Pounds. 16. How long does that take you? Anywhere between five and ten minutes. It's a very fast, very efficient piece of kit. Wow. Yeah. Gary, how much profit will you generate from each site? Uh, the generated profit is about 23,000 a month. 25,000 a month when we get to 70% capacity of, at any time. That's our max, a usage of 70% from any, any service station. And you're going to make about just over 20,000 pounds a month? Per site. Per site. And you've what? only been going for two months now? We've only, got, we've only had our first one open two months. We've got another two coming in in the next five weeks. Gary's confident profit projections have impressed Theo Pafitis and Duncan Bannertine. But Peter Jones thinks Gary's forecasts are completely unrealistic. I would suggest to you that this isn't a viable business option because you're actually going to lose money because this relies on throughput and volume. And that's why even some service stations don't have car washes in them, because the throughput isn't engaging enough for them to generate income. Mm -hmm. And why car washes are obviously being installed in other areas where they get massive throughput of cars, where they can do a car in six minutes because it's an automated car wash. Well, car washing is a, is a different... You're, in, you're into a different game. Truck washes is more of a contract, must have, um, and they get into a routine. The reasons why people do need the vehicles cleaning, the major reason, is because they have their logos on the trailers and a dirty trailer perceives that the business isn't run very well. So they're very conscious and they do have a budget for cleaning to keep the vehicles in a clean and efficient looking state. How many cars are on the road today? I would suggest it's in double digits compared to lorries. Oh, absolutely. The throughput through car washes, I would also suggest that it is certainly nothing like 75 to 100% capacity. I would agree. There are many, many times where I drive past and we see it. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, it's not easy to wash a 60-foot no. trailer. So, unfortunately, for those reasons, the return on investment, I don't believe, is there. And that's why I couldn't invest in it. Okay. So I'm going to have to say no and I'm out. Gary's lost Peter Jones, failing to convince him that he'll be able to wash enough trucks to make a profit. But Richard Farley thinks Peter Jones failed to ask a key question. 
Do you know how many trucks you need to get per hour on an average day to break even? We would break even on two an hour. Two an hour? Yeah. The services that we've got these brush washes going into are on the major, very, very busy trunk routes throughout the UK. The drivers, they have to take breaks on the tachograph, so they have to use these services anyway. Um, so there's your market that you can approach. Um, but once they know you're there, they'll come in to use those 15-minute breaks or their 45-minute breaks, knowing that you've got, they can have the truck wash whilst they're the waiting 10-15 okay, okay, minutes. That's okay, that's okay. Gary's so sure his washes will make money that it's left Deborah Meaden wondering why he needs investment. Could you have raised this money from the bank? Um, if I put my house up, I could. And why did you not do that? Well, that's all that I would get, the finance. But it's not all about the finance for me. I want to get somebody with a proven track record of building a business to a, a substantial business and I want some marketing and sales expertise to join me to push this business forward. Four dragons are still in. Will any of them offer Gary the £200,000 he needs to kick-start the motorway truck wash business? Duncan Bannatyne is ready to show his hand. Gary, I'm interested in investing in this, but there's, there's a few things that worry me. Right. How negotiable is the percentage of equity you want? It is negotiable. You're currently asking for £200,000 for 20%. I am, yeah. Right. Now, I'd be willing to bought some of that £200,000. OK. Maybe it's not all of it. But I'd be looking for a pro rata rate of 40% of the company for the 200,000. So in other words, if I put up 100,000, I'd be looking at 20%. Okay. Gary's efforts have paid off and Duncan Bannatyne has offered him half the money he needs. But Gary must get the full £200,000 he came for or he'll leave the den empty-handed. Gary, I'll jump in there and I'll, I'll, I'll say um, I'll be happy to, to do a hundred grand on the same basis as Duncan. Richard Farley wants to invest alongside Duncan Bannatyne, but between them they want 40% of Gary's company, double what he was originally offering. Two dragons have yet to decide. Deborah Meaden and Theo Pafitis. I think it's got potential. OK. So if these guys are in, I'd be happy to come in for a portion. Yeah. Well, they've so offered you 100 suggest each. suggesting we split the 200,000 in three yeah. ways? Yeah. Theo Pafitis wants Duncan Bannatyne and Richard Farley to let him in on the deal too. They'd each get less equity, but it would spread the risk of the investment among them. Deborah Meaden has yet to reveal her position. Will she want a portion of Gary's business as well? I like it. Mm -hmm. I think you've got a... Um, I like the business for many reasons. Um, it feels like there could be a good opportunity there, although I think it is... There's obviously risk attached to it. I am willing to invest mm -hmm. for forty percent of the business, but I would want to put the two hundred thousand in. So the choice you're going to make is between me, two hundred thousand at forty percent, or you've got three dragons to my right who you'll have to make your decision whether you want one or you want three. Oh, you dirty little gazumper. To Duncan Bannatyne's annoyance, Deborah Meaden has launched a rival offer. She's pitting herself against the three other dragons. But now Richard Farley thinks Deborah Meaden's tactics have created a better opportunity for him. I'll tell you what, I'll split things up because I'm not keen on doing three. <laughs> I think we'll be a committee of, you know. Okay. Uh, so I'll do it with Deborah. If Deborah's happy, we'll do 100 grand each. and. Leave these two to do it together. Okay. So you've got two and two. How's that? In pursuit of a better deal for himself, Richard Farley has abandoned Duncan Bannatyne and Theo Pafitis and teamed up with Deborah Meaden. Gary still has two firm offers on the table, but both sides are demanding 40% of his business. Will Gary compromise to get the investment and help he's come for? 
Are you quite happy with the figure of 40% for 200,000? Because otherwise we're having a wasted conversation. Well, mm, it's 100% uh, it's more than I was offering, which to me is a, is a massive jump. If uh, I was you, right. I would be very happy with 40% yeah. for 200,000. I feel that 40% um, is 100% more than I've come to negotiate with and uh, it's a bit heavy, to be honest, because it, it values what I've come with today. Before you go any further, I'm not negotiating on right. the 40 per cent, so before you, I'm just, before you I need to know that before you carry course. on. I'm not, I'm not yeah. negotiating on the 40 okay. per cent. Okay, okay. Um, I'd like to think that somebody could meet me halfway. So you would offer 30 per cent? For 200,000? I would. I'd be willing to give you £100,000 for 17.5%, which equates to £200,000 for 35%. Gary, let me help you make your decision. Um, the risk reward ratio for me says pro rata 40%. So I am not coming down to Duncan's level. No. So I'll do a half, I'll do a quarter, I'll do a third. But it all equates to 40 for two. But it all equates to 40%. You OK. Theo Pafitas is refusing to lower his demands, but this drives a stake between him and Duncan Bannatyne, who is prepared to accept less. Deborah Meaden is also refusing to negotiate and is holding out for 40%. Richard Farley has yet to decide. Will he change sides yet again in order to secure the deal? I'd be happy to invest on the same terms as Duncan, so that the two of us got 35 per cent, 17 and a half each, for 100,000 pounds each. Mm -hmm. The uneasy alliances between the dragons have shifted yet again. Richard Farley has dropped Deborah Meaden and joined forces with Duncan Bannatyne. They're willing to put up the 200,000 pounds for 35 per cent of the business, undercutting both Deborah Meaden and Theo Pafitis. Gary, don't let the 5% influence you away from making the right decision for you and your business. You impressed me as no-nonsense. And it looks like you're no-nonsense. I think I'm no-nonsense. And I would like you to be involved in some way or form. You don't suffer any fools. And uh, you would be a good asset to my business. So I would like you opening myself up a bit there, but I would like you to be a part of the team that takes this brush washing to the level that we can achieve. Well, I'll take 100,000 for 20%. If Deborah will take the other 100,000 for 20%, I'm your man. It's a tough decision for Gary. If he wants Theo Pafitis and Deborah Meaden involved, it's going to cost him an extra 5% of his company. Richard Farley and Duncan Bannatyne are offering Gary a better deal, but has he been swayed by Theo Pafitis' argument? There's a 5% difference between the two offers. Correct. You can both, I think, probably help me. Absolutely final, final offer, Theo, Deborah. I've told you exactly what my position is. No, no movement whatsoever, because it could sway the decision, to be honest. If you were willing to, to move, it would slightly balance the decision-making process toward you if you were to put a bit of sweetness back in the taste. You will enjoy working with us. So what's your decision? Are you, are you non... Gary, the, moving off the, twenty percent. The offer is the offer. It's decision time for Gary, and it's an agonising choice. We've got a deal. If you happy, Deborah? Yeah. Absolutely. Brilliant. 
Gary has done it. He's had to give away twice as much of his company as he intended, but he has secured twice the business expertise as well, with Deborah Meaden and Theo Pafitis investing the £200,000 he came for. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Good one. I think you do well. Good Even with five percent less, they didn't take us. He didn't take us. I think it was a silly move for five percent. I don't see why it, why it didn't. But there you go. <sighs> Gary, are you happy? Very happy. Now you could have had a better price. You could have got a better deal than yes. you did. Yeah. <sighs> but you clearly really like Theo. I do. Yeah. I so do. you're paying a high price for the services of Theo. Yeah, I think I can work with the man. Did you ever think you might get a better price than the 40%? Because I, in a way, it is quite a high price you're paying. I, I didn't think I'd, I'd stick them at 20, but uh, I'm happy with 40%. I'm happy with giving 40% away to get the right team in and get this thing cracking and get it going. Very well done. Thank you very much. Thanks. Hello, my name is Sharon Wright and I'm looking for £50,000 for 15% share of my company. I first realised there was a problem threading cables and wires through cavity walls and void spaces when both a BT and a cable engineer visited my newly built home to carry out their install. Trying to thread a cable through a cavity can be hit or miss and near and impossible in some situations without the aid of an improvised tool such as a coat hanger or a drill bit. Both these ad hoc me methods present themselves with major health and safety problems, as well as wasting valuable time. They have to thread from the inside to the out, at an angle, as well as having the cavity insulation to contend with. It was after these visits I had my eureka moment and invented Magnamol. I approached BT, they liked the concept and they liked the prototype, but they wanted me to prove the value of the product. So for your normal install, from the inside of the property, simply insert your rod and you're now on the outside of the property. The pack comes with five caps and they're tapered to screw on the inside so they fit onto any size cable or wire. Simply twist them on until snug, align the magnets and push the cable through. Seal off and the job is done. The product had to work in all threading scenarios and the results showed a potential saving of 6.5 million in downtime alone per year. I have a two-year contract with BT to supply all engineers in the UK. I have a two-year distribution agreement with Schneider in the UK. And I have a distribution relationship in the USA covering all 50 states of America and Canada. I also have a letter of intent for one million units. <clears throat> the product is proven to work first time every time. Thank you for your time. Has anybody got any questions? It's an impressive start by Sharon Wright from Scunthorpe, who wants a £50,000 investment in her time-saving cable threading accessory. She's prepared to give away 15% of her company, Magnamol. Duncan Bannatyne is first to question the inventor. Sharon, I'm a bit taken back. It sort of seems too good to be true and too simple. What does it cost you to produce? It costs from 97p to £3.74. And oh, what are you selling for? To wholesale, I'm selling them out from anywhere from £5.70 minimum up to £12. So it costs you a pound, you're selling for £5? Yeah. OK. How many have you sold? 36,000 I've sold that I've invoiced and been paid for. And I've got another 11,500 units that I'm waiting for call-off from BT contract. The big question that's just hit the back of my brain is, why do you need any money? You've... you've, you've, you've invented a product. I take it you've patented it. Yep. It's got a UK granted patent. It's also got okay. the international patent. You've sold a huge number. So why do you need anybody's money? Why take somebody else's money and give them equity in your Because I'm working fantastic company. 16, 20 hours a day, seven days a week, and I need your help to take me to the next level. Sharon's staying confident. James Kahn is keen to know more about the inventor herself. What's your background? How did you... I, I'm, 
I'm confused. My background was health and safety and quality assurance, which naturally go together. I'd moved into a brand new house. I'd had the, um, the install booked. BT were due in the morning. They didn't arrive till lunchtime. So I was under pressure, obviously, to get back out the door to do my job. I asked him if there was anything I could do to hurry the job along. And he said, I'll get my, my tool from the van. And it was a coat hanger, which naturally I thought, my God, you don't even know what's on the inside <laughs> of that cavity. My health and safety background came into force. And it, it just came, it, I just had one of those eureka moments and I thought, I can't believe this product's not out there. So I did my research, I looked at everything Sharon, that was on the market. I think it's ingenious. Thank you. It, I was told from the patent attorney when I first went to see him, it was a no-brainer. It was like the cat's eye situation. And that gave me the confidence, really, to take it to the next Sharon, level. I'd like to say you're fabulous. So I'm going to say it, you're fabulous. Thank you. I'm about right to check £50,000 from my Good. children's hard-earned inheritance. Good. What are you going to do with it? 5,000 would be for the CAD inserts to have the language interpretation multilingual. I want to go global and go into every single country with this product. 10,000 would be into the, the website, obviously, the language interpretations and for market research. 35 would be in for staffing, so it releases me to be able to do what I'm good at, to go and be an have ambassador. Have you got no staff at the moment? I've got one person that works one day a week. That's all I can and afford. And this is your full-time job? This is my full-time Day job, night job, evening working, job, working weekend job. Uh, no, I have an office. I do have an office. Where? In my hometown, Scunthorpe. Scunthorpe. Yeah. Tell me, Sharon, do you have a family? I have a 12-year-old little girl who's my biggest fan and biggest supporter. OK. And that's it. Sharon has yet to put a foot wrong. But Peter Jones thinks he might have spotted a flaw. The biggest issue and potential flaw to me over this invention is the fact that it's not an invention or a product that actually will be purchased more than once. You kind of almost want your product to break occasionally. I think once you've hit that market, what I'm saying is I think once you've hit the penetration... I wouldn't agree because my next product, my next, next invention, takes the cables down the inside of the cavities, but you have to buy magnum oil to be able to retrieve it. And that's why the distribution chains that I've got, I'm working towards longevity. <laughs> I told you. Mm. I think you've done amazingly well. I really do. So I'm not going to declare myself out yet. I'm <laughs> going to sit tight and wait to see what the dragons <laughs> do. It's been a clean sweep of praise for this entrepreneur and her product. But Sharon has yet to receive an offer. Is Deborah Meaden prepared to invest? I've got to say, you're great. Thank you, you present well, you've done a fantastic job. You know, uh, I think we're all sitting here thinking, what do we ask? She's brilliant. Um, but I'm not understanding exactly what you're expecting from an investor. Are you looking for contacts? Are you looking for office space, office support? Very specifically, what are you the after? Thing, I think I could have moved this a lot quicker. I'm quite disappointed in myself for taking two years to get from the <laughs> I idea. wouldn't be, Sharon. I should be quite pleased with yourself. <laughs> I think this is the first time ever in a den someone has come in and all five dragons' jaws have dropped yeah. to no, you're very the good. floor. So do Thank not be good. disappointed. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. But for me, just having someone at the end of the phone, so I'm not up 23 hours of the night and only getting one hour sleep because some decisions take me a long time to make them and I still battle with them and I have made mistakes along the way, but still just having that confidence as somebody who's been there and done it, that's priceless to me. It's absolutely priceless to me. Sharon, can I ask you one question? Yes. If you had a magic wand... Yep. This was your magic wand... Yep. ..and you went... Yep. What would you like to happen as you walk out the den? to receive the £50,000 for 15% share of my company. From? From particular dragons. Mm. From James and Duncan, if I'm being honest. OK. Focusing on one investor over another is a dangerous game to play in the den. Will Sharon's candour pay off? I mean, the company that James and I of investing is called Electro Expo. It has chop box, wrap strap, and three other products that haven't been on Dragon's Den. Okay. So, um, I, I mean, yeah, I think, I think Sharon is very, very investable. So, person. are you making an offer 
to me. We certainly will well, make well, we're an not offer. Sharon, because only because they're waiting to spoil our offer. Nobody wants to break cover first, Sharon. That's uh, what's happening here. Yeah, I was just <laughs> let, saying let there's me, no offers on the table yet. Sharon, let, let me help you. I'm going to break cover because um, you deserve it. Thank you. Okay. Duncan and James have already said they're, hap uh, they're happy to make you an offer. You've already said you've come in and then looking for an offer from Duncan and James. Okay. As far as I'm concerned, I'll be more than happy to underwrite what you asked for, uh, which was... 50,000, 15%. So you. I'm your insurance policy here. OK. In a bid to flush out a potential offer from his rival dragons, Theo Pafitis has shown his hand. But it's not gone down well with Duncan Bannatyne. I remember, Sharon, we had a, a, a fantastic young lad who came in front of us um, who had a retail product. And I remember saying to the young lad, you know, it's a fantastic product. And the best person for you to develop product is Theo Pafitas. And I pulled out and I let Theo do the deal with the lad. Yeah. Obviously, these three dragons are not as honourable as me <laughs> and they won't do that. Duncan, make her an offer. You can do it. She wants you to. Make her an offer. Can, can James and I go to the back of the room? <laughs> <laughs> Just you in there. It's all right. It's a bizarre den moment. Will James Kahn and Duncan Bannatyne come back with a tactic to outfox their rivals? <laughs> Thank you, Sharon. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Who's in charge here? Um, should I? Sharon, we, we, we've had a little think. Yeah. We've had a debate. James has <laughs> phoned his, 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 his wife and I've phoned my mother. <laughs> and we like to make you an offer, OK? OK. <laughs> Um, Sharon, you've come in looking for 50,000. Um, we would like to make an offer for 80,000 um, because to go into America, Australia, uh, and all of that, yeah. um, to do it properly, yeah. you know, I think it's better to have a bit more than to have a bit less, um, but we'd need 25%. Okay. Do you want to add anything to that? Um, no. <laughs> Sharon now has an offer for more money than she came in for, but in return for much more equity. Is Deborah Meaden prepared to take on Sharon's preferred dragons to clinch the deal? Without a doubt, these guys are very well placed, but you shouldn't discount the experience that other people have. Because, to be honest, getting out to the overseas market in one area is quite similar to getting into overseas market in other yeah. areas and we all of us have experience yeah. in doing that and certainly nobody ever complains when they work with me so I will make you an offer and I'll make you an offer at the level that you asked so 50,000 pound 15 percent if we do work together and find that we needed more money in the business yeah. I just make the business happen and I provide the funds to do it okay. as long as I'm convinced on the business plan okay it's a show of ruthless determination from Deborah Meaden. Now, Peter Jones is ready to tell Sharon where he stands. I think and feel that you don't need any money. Um, and I think you need an individual or individuals that are going to take this product, help you take this product and expand it, and I think it's going to go potentially global. And I think I'm going to shock everybody by saying I'm going to declare myself <coughs> out because I think okay. that Duncan and James are the best place to take your business forward. OK. Sharon, just have a reflection, I think. OK. In an unusual move, Peter Jones has made way for his rival dragons. Sharon now has to decide between accepting more money or keeping more of her company. Thank you for your offer, everybody. I'm a businesswoman, and I'd be stupid not to negotiate further. <laughs> Would you go for 20% and I'd be happy to do the deal with you two guys? Would you meet us at 22 and a half? Yes, I would. So, I'd be very pleased. I, I, and, I, and I would love to do the deal with you. I really would. 
Thank you. Well, great deal. Thank well you. Fantastic, Sharon. I'm so proud. So proud. Sharon's done it. She may have given away more equity than she originally intended, but she walks away with more cash and the two dragons she wanted. Amazing. Absolutely. Amazing. She was absolutely fantastic. One of the best I've seen. Immaculate. Absolutely That'd be immaculate. Very good. Well, Sharon, it's hard to think of a more impeccable encounter. Your daughter will obviously be very proud, I imagine. Molly will be so proud of me. She's been my biggest support from day one. And she said to me this morning, you can do it, Mum. And, no, she will be so proud of me. Well, you're undoubtedly the star of Scunthorpe tonight. Very, very well done indeed. Thank you very much. Our final entrepreneur into the den is Manchester-based John Kershaw. I think I'm excited. Um, I might just be bricking it. My biggest challenge in the den is going to be getting across the idea that my business has value, even though it doesn't yet have very much revenue. That's going to be the big thing that's probably going to trip me up. Hello, I'm John. I'm from M14 Industries, and we are a dating company. This £3 billion a year industry gives you effectively two choices. You can sign up to a service like Match.com or OkCupid, answer hundreds or thousands of questions all about you and what you like to do on a Friday night, and they use this information to match you with people who are sort of like you. Or you can sign up to one of the apps like Tinder or Happen, and these do away with all of those questions and instead give you effectively a list of people for you to swipe your way through. These apps are very fashionable, they're very cool, they're very mobile friendly, um, but they're very bad at actually matching you with people that you have anything in common with, except proximity. We think the solution is with simple niche dating apps. By targeting a specific niche, you can get the specificity of a service like Match.com and blend it with the simplicity of a service like Tinder. Bristler is our first product. Bristler matches those with beards to those who want to stroke beards. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Don't worry, it gets, it gets better, it's fine. So Bristler's been a huge success. Since we launched a little over a year ago, we've welcomed more than 150,000 people to the platform. We've made more than half a million matches between them, and I've personally had a bunch of wedding invites, which is just really lovely. Um, we've received national and international press coverage. Uh, the uh, Evening Standard put us alongside apps like Uber as one of the top 30 apps for Londoners, and Time Out New York listed us as one of the top 10 apps for New Yorkers. Now we're looking to expand. I'm here to ask for £80,000 for 15% of M14 Industries to allow us to grow beyond beards. We are opening up our technology to allow anyone or any company to have their own fully managed dating or social app. And oh, it's just very exciting. So <laughs> thank you very much for your time. I look forward to your questions. A pitch with passion from Hirsute hopeful John Kershaw. He wants £80,000 in return for a 15% share of his tech business providing bespoke dating and social apps. Deborah Meaden already seems smitten. You see, can I just tell you, I love that as a pitch. I always say to people, just beat what you know about and do it with passion <laughs> and to end up with saying, well, it's just so exciting. I mean, that's just, I love it. You got me already. Right. So at the moment you're trading, are you, are you making money? I mean, describe what the business is doing at the moment. Um, as far as Bristol is concerned, it's turning over give or take a thousand pounds a month. But it's, it's our proof of concept of like, we set it up. We pushed it, and it's just rolling and bringing in this much money. As far as M14 is concerned, we have one of the largest radio networks in the UK 
on board, fully signed up. Uh, we've signed with one of the largest publishers um, in the world to start developing for them. These contracts that you've just signed, yes. you mentioned you signed one with, who was it? Uh, I can't say the name. Right, so like Global? Uh, that could be them, yes. Yeah. Is it them? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> if you've just broken my NDA, I'm going to be so mad. But... <laughs> OK. I'd like it known that he said that, I didn't. I'm bad at secrets, I'm sorry. Didn't take long, did it? <laughs> <laughs> you guys are good. I don't... Um, so, to be fair, uh, you're rubbish. So oh, we're good. Come on you're now. rubbish. You crack so, too easily. You crack no, I too quite easily. Like the fact, I quite like the fact that we're good. Um, OK, so, you, so you've signed with the, ra the, the radio business. By the way, I think it's, that's, that's quite good. What will that give you in terms of income? We're anticipating it to be in the region of tens of thousands per year in recurring revenue. OK. The entrepreneur's disclosure of a potentially profitable media partnership appears to be wooing Peter Jones. But is retail tycoon Tuka Suleiman playing hard to get? Why dating apps? Um, I'm in the retail world. There's a, a platform called Shopify. Yes. And if you're a small business, you can go on Shopify, mm -hmm. and have your own website, yep. and they've made a fortune. Yes. Because the market is growing. Yeah. The, the fact that you're focusing on the dating apps, I mean, surely what, 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 once most of them go out of business and the top 20 or 50 apps are there, mm -hmm. um, you're going to run out of business. So in the same way we went from Bristler to dating, we see it as progressing from dating into social apps. Um, right. So for example, we have a client called Bump and they are for single mums and new mums to find other single mums and new mums. So that's not a dating site, but the, the way you match make people with similar interests, that's kind of where we see that growing. John's forward thinking has certainly clicked with Tuka Suleiman. But can he convince Sarah Willingham that his app design company can scale up to a serious size? How many people, realistically, do you think you can reach? And what does that mean in terms of revenue? Just uh, so, paint me a picture. In terms of dating, we think the market cap that we can reach in the next several years is about 10,000 individual partners, um, which would turn over around about 100 million. Based on what? Uh, like, based where's on that the size of the from? industry and the number of niche websites that sprung up um, and the, the amount of demand already out there. But, John, you're talking about finding 10,000 yeah. bristlers. Uh, yeah. Really possible? Yes. Some will be bristler size, some will be 10 times the size, and some will be 10 times less. We're not talking about... No, I understand so that, but the ones that are 10 times the size are not going to use you. They would start with us because... They'd leave you. There's no real need to leave M14 because for them to run their own technology, for them to have their own developers and for them to do their own customer support would cost more than we are actually effectively billing them because we have the economies of scale. The self-assured app entrepreneur appears to have an answer for everything. And it's prompted Tuka Suleiman to make up his mind. You're very credible. Oh, thank you. I, I want to get my toe in the water with you. OK. I'll make an offer. I, I'm willing to put up half the money for 12.5%. One of the other dragons wants to join me in this journey. You know, that is my offer. OK. Well, thank you. A proposition from Tuka Suleiman, not just to the entrepreneur, but to the rest of the den. So far, online innovator Nick Jenkins has kept his counsel. Is he about to declare his hand? I see the beauty of what you're trying to achieve, and I know uh, it, it, it makes a lot of sense to me. I, I, I'd like to make you an offer. I'd like to make you an offer for £80,000 for 20% of, of the equity. That would be my offer. OK. 
A second bid for the entrepreneur's business as Nick Jenkins offers the full cash, but bypasses Tuka Suleiman's suggestion to split the investment. Which way will Sarah Willingham go? I'd also like to work with you and I'd also like to invest. I will offer you all the money mm -hmm. um, for 20% of the business, or I will offer you actually any, on the same proportion, any proportion with any number of dragons. But I would just like to go on this journey with you. OK, thank you. Three potential matches. Tuka Suleiman's offered half the 80,000 for 12.5%. Nick Jenkins, the full amount for 20%. And Sarah Willingham is so keen to do a deal, she tables an open-ended offer to split with any of the Dragons on any of their terms. What's up Peter Jones's sleeve? John, um, I'm going to tell you where I am, because I own a company called Brampath, um, mm. Brampath Commerce, and we are now, I don't know, we're a top 10 global player in, in e-commerce. And I was sitting here thinking, have I got a conflict of interest? But I've come to the conclusion that regardless of whether I have a conflict of interest, I'd like to invest in you. You are probably one of the most appealing individuals to invest in that I've seen in the den for a long time. I think I'm blushing. <laughs> Genuinely, I well, think... Well, thank you very much. With your level of um, knowledge of where to take this business and the support that I could give, I think that I think we'd be a really good team. So I'm going to make you an offer. So I'm going to offer you all of the money for twenty percent. Okay. But likewise, if Nick would want to share it, I'd be very happy to share the investment with Nick as well. I'd be very happy with that. I think that <clears throat> you'd have a much greater chance of success with, with the pair of us working on that. Thank you. Peter Jones and Nick Jenkins join forces in a strategic bid to seal a deal. But their equity demand is 5% more than John wanted to give away. Is Deborah Meaden about to up the ante? So I'm going to make you an offer. Um, and, and I'm going to match these guys. I'm going to make it really hard for you. <laughs> I'm going to say exactly the same thing, which is that I'm going to offer you all of the money, which is 80,000. Um, I want either 20% of the business, or I'm happy to share with any of the other dragons. Um, that's my offer. A major coup for John, as all five dragons are feeling the love and showing the money. But as Nick Jenkins and Peter Jones join forces to try to clinch the deal, it's time for a tenacious Tuka Suleiman to get tactical. I'm going to offer you all the money. I thought you've already made an offer. No. You can make more offers. I did. I can change my offer, can't oh, you, I? No, you can't. Don't look at me. Yes. I can change my offer. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. OK? Yeah, 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 yeah. You want to change your offer now? I want to change my offer. Right. Okay. I want to give you all the money mm. for 15%. Shaking it up a bit, isn't it? Wow. I need to put this in a spreadsheet. Realistically, to summarise, I think you've got you've got the pair of us um, uh, for twenty percent, and then then the other combinations would be either Deborah on her own, Sarah on her own, um, Sarah and, uh, and myself. Sarah. Yeah, and but then uh, or you've got all of it with Tuka. Or I would share with somebody if somebody felt they wanted seven and a half percent. I won't do that, so I'm probably it's either me and Sarah, me as an individual okay. or me and Sarah. Okay. I'm gonna pace around anxiously do for that. a bit. Do that. It's the entrepreneur who is firmly in the driving seat, and the dragons who must sweat it out. Will he go for a deal that means giving away five percent more equity than he intended? Or opt for Tuka Suleiman? whose revised bid for a 15% stake undercuts them all. I finished computing. Um, thank you all so much for the offers. 
don't know, it's a really nice sort of vote of confidence. But I think just by sort of experience, um, I'll have to go with you two. So I'd like to accept your offer. Well, well done. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Well done. That was unexpected. Great. Okay. So, well done. Uh, done. You're very well, credible. Yeah, well thank done. Thank you very much. Oh, great. Well, I best get back to work. Good. All right. <laughs> thank you very much. A thrilling finish for the app entrepreneur as he picks his perfect investment partners. It definitely hasn't sunk in yet. I think what happened in there was amazing and wonderful, and I'm very lucky. Congratulations, guys. I'm very jealous. You know when you have to smile and say congratulations yeah. and you're like, ah. Oh. <laughs> oh, I'm so oh, happy no, for I you. Why. I get why. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant.